thank you for being here with us, Ken. Thank you, Chanelle. You know, Welcome. when you talk to your clients right now, what is the single biggest thing you think is driving deals right now? Uh, at the moment, it's a mix of uh, optimism, confidence, availability of capital. I mean, I think those are really the drivers. In the background, a couple of catalysts. Um, one is the pace of change in the economy and trying to keep up with it, particularly around technology as it permeates every different sector. Uh, and then second, I think increasingly we're going to see more themes around ESG, particularly around climate and the impact of uh, a move towards a zero emissions world. So you said optimism is one of the first things, but what if, what if anything can derail that confidence that's out there right now? Uh, probably a combination of any one of the following three. Uh, the first is in expectations around inflation. Um, that's something that obviously we've, we've heard a lot about in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, the second is obviously geopolitical. Uh, and that can be anything from an unexpected war somewhere to another round of cyber that actually becomes system, uh, systemic for a, for, for a period of time. And the last is if we have um, unfortunate news around uh, the success of the vaccinations or anything to do with the uh, pandemic. I think those are the three larger themes that are out there that could derail the environment we're in. Ken, given it's such a hot market for deal making, how do your bankers feel? Are they ready to come back into the office and get back on trains and planes? Or are you seeing some reluctance still? Uh, look, I think that, um, uh, at least speaking for Lazard, this has been an extraordinarily productive year. We haven't really missed uh, much as a result of being out of the office. I think longer term, it has big impacts on the ability to train and recruit and retain. Uh, the best of our people. And um, this ultimately is an in-office experience. I expect, you know, by the fall, we'll be more in the office, a lot more in the office than we are today. Um, and that's what we're working towards. So, you know, there's another thing you've been doing at Lazard with the foundation, and that is working with younger people. That's people before college to get them familiar with financial services. Why are you doing this? And how can that perhaps add to the diversity we're seeing in the industry after complaints about pipelines for so long? Oh, great question. Look, uh, we announced uh, last week the formation of uh, the Lazard New Visions Academy. It's a uh, summer program uh, where over the next two years we've committed to uh, 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 recruiting 600 students, 300 per year, paying them a stipend of about $1,000 for the summer, the five-week program. Uh, entirely from the public school system in New York City, uh, from under-resourced uh, communities. The goal is a five-week training program on how to acquire social capital to get a job. Uh, the curriculum is tailored around what is one of the key inhibitors in terms of people going from uh, education in high schools into college and then still failing at getting really good jobs. A lot of it has to do with building up social capital. And by that, it's really interview skills. How do you prepare for an interview? How do you get ready to, 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 to look for a job? What would you be reading? Um, uh, what kind of questions should you be prepared to ask? What kind of questions should you be prepared to answer? I mean, it's a whole range of things in social capital. Why Lazard? Um, right. Or why do this? Because this is, you know, one of the big gaps in the marketplace. I mean, it is it is where so, I think we can make the biggest difference. Ken, I want to also ask about not just the pipeline, but the top ranks of the investment banks. We're still seeing an industry that is largely white males in a time where we're focusing on diversity across the financial industry. You know, I do say this as a, to a firm I know that has some of the most prominent black, bank black bankers in history, Vernon Jordan, Bill Lewis. But why aren't there, why isn't there more diversity among senior management? Look, this is an enduring problem for the investment banking industry, I'd say, for Wall Street, for financial advisory, and candidly, uh, for Lazard. It's a problem that uh, isn't going to get solved overnight. I think the consultancies, the, um, uh, the accounting firms have done a better job. They've started sooner. They've done a much better job at uh, growing people through the ranks and retaining them and finding ways to make uh, this, their, their firms work for these, for these groups, and I think we have a long ways to go. I want to... Um, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. I did want to switch gears a little bit, too, just because you were so early on the crypto conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2018, I had talked to you about this, and you, you mentioned some concerns about China getting more involved in digital currency. You know, we have the U.S. now talking about uh, digital currencies in a much bigger way. What's the latest conversation among your clients and the threat or the opportunity of crypto? Look, I think that there are three questions that surround crypto that have to be answered. The first is, what happens if there's digital currencies that are suddenly sponsored by countries? Uh, so as an example, in all likelihood, China is going to be launching a cryptocurrency sometime in 2022, or a digital currency, I should say, and, and likely the same for someone, some country in Europe. And, I, and, you know, eventually the Fed is, I know the Fed is also looking at this today. Second is... Uh, security. Uh, candidly, you know, this this is we're in, we're in a world before quantum. What happens when quantum arrives to these to these technologies? And then the third is is what it's being used for. And over time, uh, is that something that gets restricted, particularly around uh, some of the cyber uh, crime that is taking place? I think those are three overriding questions um, for crypto as it exists today. In other hot markets, what about SPACs? I know Lazard has been involved in some as well. Where do you see that industry going from here? It's a good question. Um, there, there is a possibility that this whole th this is a phenomena. It's a phenomena of uh, cheap money and um, uh, and um, a risk on environment. Alternatively, it's e it could easily be the case that this is something which becomes a complement to the um, to the IPL markets uh, because a SPAC is fundamentally just a structured form transaction to get, another, to get a company public, much like an IPO is. So it's another form of that. And the IPO markets in the U.S. Um, are not an entirely pleasant experience for, for a lot of the participants. The issuer, uh, it's difficult for the buyers. You don't always get as much stock as you want. You know, the SPAC market solves some of those problems. Um, over time, it may get it more institu institutionalized and solve more of those problems. We'll see. It's an open question at the moment.